Welcome people. Phil here with Clay Class. Today we are going to make a teapot, um, sort of a dome shaped teapot form. I'm going to throw the body, the spout, I'm going to make a lid, and then the handle will be a pulled handle. So, um, different components of the teapot, we're going to make it happen right now. I'm throwing on a bat, I don't usually throw on bats unless it's something that is a challenge to take off the wheel. If it was a more of a vertical uh, teapot form or like a sort of a bulbous vase, I could just take it off the wheel um, when I'm done throwing it. But this one's going to have a wide low base. It's going to be a dome shape. So. so it's just easier to do it with a, with a bat. Okay, I'm just going to check my thickness. I'm just going to tool the inside, compress that a little bit. And then, as I pull, I have to really angle in. Now, whenever you're doing something that is going to require necking, collaring, um, you have to leave a little more thickness. When I throw a vase, I try to get as much weight as I can out of the bottom two thirds if I'm throwing a tall vase. But that top third, I have to leave a little more thickness so it's easier to collar in. Um, I can always pull it out as I'm collaring, uh, pull the weight out. But if you don't, um, leave a little bit of thickness, it's really hard to collar and you end up with, it ends up folding. So I'm going to get as much weight out of the base of this as I can. And then I'll just leave a touch of weight. So I can get any of the extra moisture out of there. So now I can pull any of that extra weight out as I'm collaring. Before I get too narrow, I'm going to make sure I have the form I want at the bottom. So I'm going to just push out with my wooden spoon. Okay, getting any of that extra weight out. Yeah. 
Now, do I, do I want a super sharp plane change here? I probably do. Looks pretty good just like that though, eh? Usually I'll... I'll dig in just to define it a little bit. This is pretty groggy clay, so I'm going to get my little newspaper chamois and just try to smooth this. this lip a little bit and that looks a little better. I can soften my edge there a touch. And now, let's see, I'm just going to get my bottom edge where I want it. I think I'm going to use my beaded foot tool. And that'll create a nice sort of termination at the bottom of that. Okay, we are looking good. foot nice top okay so I'm gonna let that dry okay now for my teapot I didn't need to make a spout and a lid so I'm gonna make both those pieces out of this piece of clay. My first pull I pretty much did with my left hand. Only my left hand. it in. This is going to be a pretty tall spout that's going to have a curve in it, so I need to get it tall and narrow. Pull my spout nice and tight. I'm just going to use my little paintbrush for my last pull. And then, let's see, I'm going to just neck in my base a little more. And then, notice I'm just kind of supporting this while I'm tooling. And that will keep it from sort of, sometimes the pot can catch on your rib and spin off. 
so. Sometimes I'll tool it with this on, to support it. Okay, that's looking good enough. I think. And sometimes I'll leave the spout, you know, I'll leave the lip of the spout like this. Sometimes I'll cut it at an angle. Depends on the teapot. Let's see, I'm going to just get a little more, a little more height out of my spout by doing that. Okay, there we go. I think I can cut it pretty flat, like there. Now, after this dries just a little bit, I'm going to give it a bend. Okay. Now, my lid. This is probably a little more clay than I'm going to need <coughs> for my lid. That's okay, I'm just going to trim it off after I pull. Let's see. Where'd my little guide go? Okay, this is the measurement of the inside of my spout, so i got to go narrower. Okay, and this is a little too much height, so I can just <coughs> lop some of that off, and it's probably a little too much width, maybe, maybe a little bit, so I'm just going to go in there and do that. Then, I'll just tool this. Okay, that'll be a nice lid. It'll overhang and I'll be, it's a nice grabbable lid. Um, so, I'm just going to trim it. Let's see. I don't have a spot I can. There we go. Okay. 
some teapot parts, okay? Now, actually I could right away, let's do this. It's probably dry enough. But I'm just going to give my spout a little bend. And I can give it a little more bend as it starts to dry out more, but that'll that'll be enough for now. Okay, good morning, people. Um, we're gonna put this teapot together. So um, yesterday I I threw this form. It's a nice sort of dome form. Um, I threw a little spout. I gave it a little bend yesterday. Also threw a lid and trimmed it. And uh, that fits nicely on there. So the um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the spout on. Okay. Um, when I do this, the first thing I do is I figure out where I need to cut that spout. And it looks as though... I mean, I'm going to have this go pretty vertical, so I'm kind of guesstimating where I'm going to cut it, and it's something like that. So. So I need to cut it so it follows the curve. And I'm going pretty vertical on this one. Because the handle will go vertical as well. I might actually take the handle over the top. So I'm going to just put this on here like that. Um, I could hollow this just a touch. And then I'm going to slip this first. And this is going to give me an idea of where to cut my hole. So. So sometimes I'll just go and give an exterior mark. And then you can see that that allows me to find my hole now. In the old days, when I made teapots, I wouldn't cut the whole thing out. I would, I would do a bunch of holes. So if you're making a pot of tea with tea leaves, it would strain it. But they always just get clogged with glaze, and they, you know, I don't know. When I make a pot of tea now, I just throw a couple of bags in there, tea bags. Okay, so. Here's my other new find. This little cocktail fork is great for scoring. Goodwill, good stuff, huh? That should work. sure it's level. Now the other thing that I want to consider on this is teapots often when you fire them they twist a little bit or, or essentially they untwist 
So um, this was thrown, the wheel was going um, counterclockwise. So uh, when it untwists, it's going to untwist clockwise. So usually um, I will make the, I'll make the spout curve a little bit to the left. And if I make it curve a little bit to the left, then when it fires, it'll even out. And especially if I'm going to fire this in a wood kiln, if I'm going cone 10, it'll, um, it'll twist on me. And that's actually not a huge deal, but it's kind of fun, the beauty of it. So what happened to my brush? I'm just going to get a lot of pressure on here. And I want a nice clean connection. So sometimes I just take a little water. Oh, look at that. I had a little underglaze in this brush left over. Okay, that looks pretty good. So now I got to get a handle on there. Um, the handle I'm going to make, I'm going to pull it and then I'm going to let it um, stiffen up a little bit before I put it on. And now I have to decide am I going to make the handle curve over the top and touch here, which I've done many times, or I think I'll just make it curve up like this. Well, I don't know. That's a tough call. I'll make them both and we can see what they look like. And now I've got to decide what I want to do with this teapot. I could have a handle that goes over the top, which would be pretty cool, I think. That's, I'm leaning towards that one. Or I could have a handle that goes like this, or even fat side down. That's pretty good too. But, oh, I just scarred my handle. I'm leaning towards the one that scoops over the top. I think I'll do that one. So, what that means is, Maybe I can save this one for something else. Um, I need to have enough clearance to put the lid in, so I think I'm sort of marking my, my spot where I'm going to cut this. And then, I don't need too much. One of the problems when you dry handles like this, when you, sh when you dry them fast, is the skinny part dries more than the other part, right? So, it can uh, cause problems. But this is going to kind of go like that. I think that works visually. Pretty nice actually. Functionally it's going to really work well. 
So I'm just gonna mark where my my stuff goes. Okay. Slip up my spot here. Score it up a little. Slip my handle. I got a little slip here. We don't want this to come off. Gonna stick this temporarily and then get our handle secured on this back edge. Make sure I'm centered. I'm not quite centered. I was a little off. Heat adjoining clay, in addition to scoring and slipping, is pressure. You gotta get some pressure in here. Let's see, how much do I cut off of this? And then, just get a little slip on here. Maybe score it up a little bit. Just gonna attach it there. Let's see here. Okay, we're pretty straight. I think I'd like a little more space back here, which means maybe I'm forcing a coil down in here. Okay, that looks pretty cool. Very functional. My lid's gonna fit on there nicely. And very pourable, so there's my teapot for today.